Good morning and happy Sabbath. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I hope you had a blessed week. I just like to highlight uh, some of the activities we're having here at Goshen. Our education department would like to acknowledge the achievements of our students who have graduated in 2020 and those who will graduate in 2021. We're asking that you provide their name and grade in school he or she graduated. You can go to our website located at www.goshensda.com, click on a tab for contact, and there you'll be able to provide your information by way of email. We also like to share with you that our Community Relief Food Giveaway uh, that was scheduled for today has been canceled. Our next scheduled food giveaway will be held on June 19th. And we also uh, asking for special prayer for those who are sick and shut in. During your private and personal time of prayer, we ask that you will lift them up to God. And if you're interested in praying with the group, Goshen has made it possible for you to do so. One way is to join us um, seven o'clock on Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesday, and Thursday. And there's another opportunity where you can join uh, with the group to pray. It's every Wednesday at 12 o'clock during our time of power hour. And if you would like to have uh, another way of deepening your relationship with our Lord and having a more in-depth understanding of his holy word, feel free to uh, join us every Saturday at 5 p.m. where we have an in-depth Bible study. And then every Friday when we have our Sabbath school lesson, um, at 7 o'clock for our adults and children. You can go to our website, www.goshensda.com uh, to find the, um, the telephone number and the meeting ID number to join for each of those events. And if you have uh, a birthday and, uh, or an uh, anniversary during the month of May, we pray that God uh, has and will uh, bless you on that special day and that he will continue to bless you with many more. And if you're interested in keeping up to date on the uh, activities and event uh, happening at Goshen, uh, please go to our website again, www.goshensda.com. There uh, you could click on the uh, event tab which would take you to the announcement tab and then scroll down where uh, you can find instructions on how you can stay in the loop. Just like to um, uh, pray that you will have a, um, an experience, a worshiping uh, experience that you will never forget that will help draw you closer to the Lord. So I just like to leave with you to always remember that God is good all the time. Have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, church family. Good morning to everyone online. Um, no one's here with us, but we know the Holy Spirit is always with us and his angels. So it's time for prayer. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have our invocation, so if we could all please bow our heads. Merciful Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you, Father God, that you are such a good God. We thank you especially for healing, our, for healing our first elder. Oh, Lord, what a mighty God, a God who hears and answers prayer. We also thank you for the healing that Kay has experienced and that you are continuing to heal Catherine. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would uh, heal our entire land. We ask that you would be with us this morning. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us a heart like yours and a mind like Christ. And we'll be very careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, 
and all the glory. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elder Lorian Willis, and I am here to welcome you. I want to welcome you near and far. I want to welcome all of those who are online viewing our services today, whether it be here in Chicago, across the continent, everyone. I want you to feel welcome into this place of worship. I have been a member of the Goshen family for a very long time, for about 33 years, and we are a church that is truly on the move. We uh, have our food giveaway twice a month. We have a Bible study that goes on, and we are all about doing God's work, and we love the Lord. So to all of you, I welcome you once, I welcome you twice, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone have an amazing Sabbath. <laughs> Right here we sing welcome to Welcome to Goshen Where the worshippers arise Welcome to Goshen Let's lift God high You are welcome in this place Come experience His grace Welcome to Goshen We Goshen that's the end
came to lift the name of Jesus because there's nobody like him. If you believe it, can you just clap your hands in the house? If you have it, can you stand to your feet? Come on, let's clap together. Yeah. Come on and clap songs. There's nobody like him. Yes, Lord. Come on, the song is called response. Listen. Our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Our Lord. Who is strong and mighty? Our God. Seated on the throne. Our God. High above the heavens. Our God. He is God alone. Oh, oh, oh. Our Lord. Our Lord. You reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Our Lord. Our Lord. You reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody who is strong and mighty, say, our God. Seated on the throne, our God. High above the heaven, our God. He is God alone. Oh, oh, oh. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. Nobody like our God. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. Nobody like our God. glory and so father we submit ourselves 
and we surrender to your will. We surrender to your will. We say yes to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, God Almighty, Lord of glory, oh, we worship you. Lord of glory, oh, we worship you. Oh, oh, oh we worship you.
Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life, they are raging, and their fury falls all over. Just what I may have done that makes my race seem so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, you don't need to worry cause the Lord will make a way. Yes, he away somehow if underneath the cross underneath the cross you bow he will take away all your sorrow just let him just let him have your burden right now and when your load so heavy that the weight is shown you can see it all over your brow thank God there's a sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way Somehow, if 
underneath the cross, underneath the cross you bow. He will take away all your sorrow. Just let him, please let him have your burden right now. When, when your load bows you down so heavy. can see it all over your brow. Thank God there's a sweet relief. Thank God there's a sweet relief. Thank God there's a sweet relief in just I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I am so glad to share God's word with God's people this morning. It is indeed a privilege to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to keep you long this morning. I just believe that God has a word for us, and it's a word that is deserved to be heard after the music and all of the good praying that you've heard. That all sets you up for the word, and so I just want to invite you right now where you are just to bow with me as we invite God's presence in your space. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for this hour. This is your hour. We want to thank you for your word. This is your word. And I pray, God, that you would just use me as an instrument to, to share with your people your message, something that will move them, something that will draw them closer to you. God, not my will, but your will be done, I pray. Have your way in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our text for consideration this morning is taken from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, the second chapter, verses one to three. Hebrews chapter two, verses one through three, I would invite you to wherever you are to open your Bibles and read this text with me. It says, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word is spoken through angels, Prove steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Allow me this morning to speak on the topic, the deadly dangers of drifting. My focus text is going to be on Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. There's so much noise in our world today. Uh, those noise, uh, in my estimation, are distractions. Distractions that design to cause us to lose our focus and cause us to drift. 
the trials of life, the difficulties that we face are distractions. But not all drifting is considered to be something that you and I think about. All of us have the tendency of drifting away. In the Navy, during a supply operation at sea, a story was told that uh, they lost their anchor and the boat began to drift. And it began to drift towards another vessel, and this vessel was a supply vessel. No one was really paying attention. They thought the ship was secure. And, and what happened in, in a, moment, uh, a moment's time is that they struck. The two vessels collided. And if it was not for grace, I would say, there would have been damage that would have possibly caused both vessels to sink. You see, circumstances like this account has been repeated often. There are two men, the story was told, that was fishing. Uh, they were fishing above a low dam on a river, and they were nearby their hometown. As they were concentrating on catching fish, they were unaware that they had drifted until they were far from the shore. They got to the point where the water was flowing over the dam. When they realized their situation, the current uh, was so fast and it was taking them near the dam. The current was so powerful that they couldn't keep the boat from going over the dam, below the dam. The waters was dashing against the rocks and the boulders that were beneath. And all of a sudden, they caught themselves falling over the precipice and clashing down to the rocks. After a few days of relentless searching, they found, their dry, they found them. The bodies drifted ashore, but they were dead. The danger of drifting is not only limited to the physical realm. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. We find that there are warning signs against drifting in the Bible. But it's very sad to say that there are Signs that normally go unnoticed. <clears throat> and it's sad to say that it's not uncommon for Christians to drift towards destruction. Even those things that we love dearly can cause us to be distracted. And I believe that as good as some of these things may be, uh, they are there to cause us to be distracted uh, and as a result cause us to be carried away by the tides and, and the ways of life to an ultimate end. See, you have to be careful with those trappings of the world. Those trappings, those things that are designed to, to move our focus away from Jesus Christ, Jesus, who is the anchor of our soul. You see, the devil 
uses distractions, uses them to cause us to lose our way, lose, uses them to cause us to drift off course. Notice that the writer of Hebrews is, is writing to Christians of his day, and he's writing to encourage them. He's writing them to let them know that there is danger in drifting. The word drifting, if you examine the word drifting, it means that something that is diverted by force, the word distraction, the, uh, drifting means that which is broken away from its hold. It means that which has no self-control. You see, to drift means you have been washed away. You have been carried slowly by the currents or by air or, or by water. Drifting happens slowly but Surely, stay with me this morning. <clears throat> the word drifting means that you can drift aimlessly, involuntarily. You can drift due to situations uh, or, or, or certain conditions that causes you to drift. You can drift, you can be carried away by the tides or, or dangerous currents that is pulling you away from your anchor into the open sea or into the coral reef. There's some things that you ought to know about drifting. You see, drifting, when you're in the sea, it requires no effort. You can find yourself. You don't have to do anything to be drifting. Drifting requires no effort. Yeah, the minute you stop roaring, rowing, or, 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 or you decide to just relax, uh, the wind uh, can carry you away. You can begin to drift. The same is true of the Christian. That is why we are told in the text, we must give the most earnest heed. Give heed to what? The text is saying, give heed to what uh, the, the writer of Hebrews is saying, because as Christian, we can find ourselves drifting away from that which is able to save us. Drifting. You've been in a boat, is an unconscious effort, it, it takes no process. You know, you can be in a boat and, and the boat is just by the waves, just, just hitting the boat. And, and, and next thing you know, the, the boat is just moving with the wave, moving with the tide unconsciously. If the boat is not anchored to something, if it's not anchored, that boat will eventually drift away and move out from the, from, from the shore, moving into danger. See, it is very possible to drift unaware. It's possible to drift and you don't even know you're drifting. You see, in a boat, there's the undercurrents. The undercurrents are often unnoticeable from the surface. You can't see the undercurrents. You can't see them turning, but rest assured, they're turning on the bottom and, and it's causing you to move. You see, when you're in a plane and flying in a plane, the wind uh, or the gravitational force moves the plane without you even realizing that the plane is moving. You see, the same thing is true in the spiritual realm. Many of us, many Christians, many individuals today have slowly drifted away by allowing things to come into their lives that are not of God. Drifted away by allowing the world to consume them. Drifted away by allowing the thoughts and allowing the, the busyness of this life to cause them to lose their way without even realizing it. My brothers and sisters, it is possible for you as a Christian that know Jesus as your Lord and Savior to drift away unawares. Don't even know you're drifting. 
Many, many Christians have slowly drifted away. Many Christians have, uh, have gradually drifted into error. Only one day to find themselves far removed from that which is able to save them. We can never drift upstream or against the tide. You see, faithfulness to the Lord is like rowing upstream. When you're rowing upstream, you can't drift. When you're rowing downstream, you can drift. You see, as Christians, we must continue to grow in the grace of Jesus Christ. We must continue to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ because if we fail to grow, then we will drift. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 says, But grow, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. You see, the moment you and I stop growing, this the very moment we are going to start going backwards. We are going to start drifting downhill. Yeah, so the moment you and I stop progressing in our Christian life, it is the very moment we start drift. You know, and when you start going downstream, the speed increases. You start to go faster and faster. And before you know it, you're in dangerous territory. As the speed increases, you find yourself in the danger zone and it's too late. You see, the farther and farther we move away from the Lord, We care less about spiritual things. The farther we move away from Jesus Christ, the more dangerous our lives become. You see, it is a dangerous thing for us as Christians to drift from our anchor, who is Jesus Christ. And as Christians, when we start to drift, we don't even, we don't only damage ourselves, but we have the potential of damaging others. You see a ship that's just drifting, is drifting away, it, it is a hazard to other vessels because that ship can actually run into the next vessel and it can cause damage. And cause people to lose their lives. So as Christians, we, we have to be careful about drifting away. Because we can damage others on their walk. Many are tossed to and fro and carried away by every wind of doctrine. All the this kind, with different doctrines are causing us to drift. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14, the Bible says... That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried away with every wind of doctrine by the, tri by the tricklings of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plottings. We have to know the word of God. We cannot allow ourselves to be drift, to drift away by men saying and by what men thinks. We have to stand firm in the word of God. You see, it's possible as Christians uh, that, that we can lose our soul salvation and drift away. That's why the writer of Hebrews said, take heed lest you drift away. There is a warning there for us. And as Christians, we have responsibility to what we've heard and what we know. We have a responsibility to live to that which we know is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ought to live in the light of the truth. It is our responsibility to 
bring others to light is our responsibility to bear light to the world, not to drift and cause others to stumble or cause others to lose their way. We are responsible as Christians to what we have heard and to what we know, what we know we are responsible for. We're responsible to live according to the light. We're responsible to walk in the light. We're responsible not to be in darkness. We're responsible not to be drifting with the wind, not to be carried away with every wind of doctrine. We're responsible not to allow the devil to cause us to drift by the trials and the tribulations and the discouragement that he brings our way. My brothers and sisters, don't let anything cause you to drift. You are responsible as a Christian to stand firm and not allow the tides of this world and of this life to cause you to drift. You're responsible to the things you we heard You've heard the things that you've learned from the Bible. This makes us responsible. You have a knowledge. We have a knowledge of prophetic truth. And this makes us doubly responsible to God. We have tasted of the heavenly gift. We have the prophetic message. We, we've experienced the power of the world to come. We know what is to come. We have been partakers of the Holy Ghost. We've had the enlightenment of, of God's grace filling our lives. We know much, and because we know much, we are responsible to enlighten others of the truth instead of getting ourselves caught up and tied up and tangled up in the world, and the world is causing us to lose our way. Slowly, but surely, we find ourselves drifting away instead of living to the light that we know in his word. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6, the Bible says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. In other words, the writer of Hebrews is saying, it is our responsibility because of what we've heard, because we've enlight we're enlightened, because we've tasted of the heavenly gift, because we're partakers of the Holy Spirit. We know the word of God, and because of that, we are responsible to live a life worthy of, that, worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ. For those who drift spiritually, they're drifting through their own neglect. And if you drift through your own neglect, my brothers and sisters, there shall be no escape from just punishment. All of us who allow ourselves to drift away will have to one day stand before God and give an account for that, those things that you know. Hebrews chapter 2, our text. Therefore, we must give more earnest heed to the things we have heard less we drift away for if the word spoken through the angels proves steadfast and every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation which at first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him how can you neglect such a great salvation? You've heard the word. You know the word. All God expects us to do is surrender to him. Once we surrender our lives to him, what he does is that Jesus Christ comes in and Jesus puts us, God put us in Christ and Christ lives this life for us. But it just means all we have to do is surrender to him. Now, there's some them deadly dangers 
of drifting that I want to share with you. The writer of Hebrews, Hebrews is using the word in our text, not referring to particular, particular to the word. He is referring to the Christians. He's talking to you and me. He's talking to the church. And he's talking to the church because there was a state of carelessness. God professed people, they had become careless in their living. And their lives started to drift. They started to live like drifters. You know, one of those that play in the, in the river on the bank. One day they're on God's side. Another day they're on, on the devil's side. And so this is what started to happen. And as a result, the writer is penning this to encourage them. And I hope this encourages you today. You see, drifting indicates a spiritual helplessness. Uh, this helplessness says that once you have removed yourself, removed yourself from the anchor, and you start to drift, you become helpless. There is no way that you can help yourself. And so you become what the Bible declares as lukewarm, Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea and write, these things say the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I, I wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm or are neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth because you say I'm rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You see, a drifter, a Christian that is a drifter or that, has drift, that is drifting is not aware of their true condition. And many of you, many of you are listening to me today, not even aware of your true condition. You think you're good. You think all is well. I'm a good Christian. I come to church every Sabbath. I read my Bible every now and again. I pray every now and again. So I, I'm good, but I've got the world also mixed up in my life. But I'm good, but you don't, oh, you're not aware of your true condition. You're not aware that you're blind. You're not aware that you're miserable. You're not aware that you're naked. You're not aware aware of your true condition. Think you're okay. Think you're living an okay life, not knowing that you're actually moving away from the anchor of your soul. It is possible, my brothers and sisters, to have a form of godliness and yet be dead in your trespass and sin. Revelation chapter 3. First one, listen to the text, listen to the text. And this is a state of being alive, but yet dead. Don't know your true condition. You've got to know, my brothers and sisters, that, that you can, you, this drifting thing, you can, it's a state of being alive, but yet dead. You don't even know your condition. Drifting indicates a, a, a state of drowsiness, a, a state of sleepiness, a, a state of unpreparedness. And this, this is doubly dangerous for a spiritual life. Remember the five virgins? Uh, Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 12, talks about a five virgins. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven it shall be likened unto these sorry, ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five were wise and five were foolish, and the five wise one they had they took enough oil for their lamps, but the foolish one didn't take enough oil for the vessel. And the bridegroom delayed his coming. And while while the bridegroom delayed their coming, they all slumbered and, and they all sleep. And at midnight, the Bible says, the cry was heard: Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins who, who arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, say no, lest there should be not enough for us and you, 
but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. Now, the Bible declares, the story says that while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, the bridegroom showed up, and those who were ready went in with him, but those who were not ready, those who went to buy some more oil for their lamps, they were shut out. And they came knocking at the door. <laughs> Lord, Lord, please open for us. But he answered and he said to them, I don't know you. You see, they were unprepared. They got caught up in the world. They, they got caught up with life and they weren't prepared. Is it possible that they, they went to sleep because they were too tired from the party the night before? Is it possible that they, were, they, they had a hangover from drinking? Is it possible that these five foolish virgins weren't ready, weren't prepared, they were too sleepy because they spent too much time with the worldly friends? Is it possible? There, there, there are some dangers. And there's some insidious currents in our day. And these dangers are also in the church. They're not only in the world, they're also in the church. We are living in, in, a, in, in a time where the devil is after God's people. He is allowing all kinds of distractions to come in the way. And the distractions in our home, the distractions in our lives, and these distractions that he's putting in our way, even though that some of them seemly good, they're causing us to drift away. They're causing us to be unprepared. They're causing us to go to sleep. They're causing us to be lazy. The Lord describes there's a spirit of influence in our day. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 to 24. The Bible says, but of that day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, they were caught up with the world. Good people. Good Christian people. And the hour came. They were so caught up in the party, caught up in the marriage, caught up in the electric slide, caught up in, in all the trappings of this world. When the Son of Man came, they weren't ready. They drifted away. This is the condition that many of us will find ourselves in. The Bible says in verse 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So it's not time for us to go to sleep. It's not time for us to, to be caught up in the world and drift away it's time for us to be vigilant because Jesus is coming soon the spirit of all times is noted for a few things what's going on in our world today it's indifference there's some indifference in the conduct of people we don't treat each other good We're mean to each other. There's some carelessness in our conduct. There, there's a neglect to pray and study God's word. This is the spirit of our times. 
Republic against, Demo against Democrats, white against black, and, and black against Asian, and black against black. Everybody is against everybody. No one loves anyone anymore. It seems as that's the spirit of our times. No one is praying anymore. There's a neglect to pray. No one is studying God's word anymore. There's a neglect in the study of God's word. Men are becoming lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. There's a neglect in the spirit of our times. There's a neglect to work for the salvation of souls. No one wants to witness. No one wants to tell anybody about Jesus anymore. In the spirit of our times, there, there is a holding on to ill feelings to others. You know, this person did me wrong. That person did me wrong. And we hold on to the feelings. Uh, we hold on to hate. We hold on. We're unforgiving to each other. If your brother offends you, you don't want to forgive your brother or your sister. This is the spirit of our times. The spirit of our times, my brothers and sisters. We are drinking out of polluted fountains. When I talk about polluted fountains, I'm talking about the wine and the liquor and the alcohol. And we think it is okay. That's the spirit of our times. A little wine, you know, it's not going to hurt me so I can have a little wine. Uh, a little liquor is okay. You know, who can tell you that rum is bad? Rum ain't nothing wrong with that. It's okay. And so this is the spirit of our times. People are calling that which is wrong right. You know, as soon as you get yourself a little, in a little difficult situation, it's how the devil, this is what he does. You come through some kind of a trial, difficulty, so hard that you can't seem to shake it. And instead of running to the word of God, instead of running uh, and drop it on your knees, we, we run to get a Heineken. Uh, we run to, the, to get a beer, uh, to get some hard liquor. And we feel good, but just for a moment. Because what happens after the moment is that you're back in the same depressed situation. But the devil says, go ahead. Party. Have some. Numb your pain. You don't have to pray, he says. You, you, you don't even have to worry about it. Just, just have a good time. And in having a good time, you're going to let all, all of the problems and the difficulties of this life is going to go away. L what you don't realize is that while you're in the party house, while you're having a good time, you're drifting away. You could be singing in the praise team, but partying all night, drinking all night, but you're drifting Away. You can be in the church and you can be sitting in the pews, but you're carrying on. You're, you don't love your, your brother and your sister. You don't have a good conduct. You're drifting away. But yet you think you're okay. Spirit of all times is that we're reading things that are dull in our minds. We're watching television series that are dull in our minds and darkening our spirit. And we think it's okay. But the most, the most dangerous thing of all in, this, in our time is just simply doing nothing about your spiritual condition. Doing nothing about your relationship with Jesus Christ. You're just drifting along. Allowing time and allowing opportunity to slip away uh, until it's too late. My brothers and sisters, we've got to stop drifting before it's too late. Text says, therefore, we, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Uh, we, 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 we can't just drift along with the tides of times. got to 
get out of the sleep, get out of the slumber, get out of the state of, of laziness and start to work for the master. Spend time in the word of God. Help yourself not to drift. We, we, we are the light, my brothers and sisters, and we ought to live the light to the world so that the world may see Jesus in us. There's some common signs of spiritual drifting. You got to look out for these signs. I want to share them with you. You know when you're spiritually drifting, when you have a lack of desire to study God's word and pray. Once you've lost that desire to study God's word and to spend time in prayer, you're spiritually drifting. And I'm not talking about those, you know, every moment when things are bad kind of prayer. I'm talking about you when you're not daily. You've got to be in prayer daily. The moment you stop praying daily and reading the word of God daily, I'm not talking about reading the daily bread. I'm talking about opening God's word, allowing the spirit of God to speak to you through his word. When, when you have, when you've lost that desire to study the word of God and to pray, you're drifting. You see, the Bible is a very, it's a very powerful book. It's a source of all our information, and it's God's revelation to us. It's way by how this is how God speaks to us, and we've got to open the word of God. It gives us direction. It gives us guidance. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and, and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. You see, when we lose our desire to study God's word, we are drifting. Prayer. When we don't pray, this wonderful blessing that God has given to us this is a way where we communicate with God. You see, we want God to bless us, but we don't want to hear from him. And, and so we lose that desire to communicate. And the way we communicate with him is by spending time in prayer. Jesus, if Jesus prayed so often, how do we think that we are going to live a life without praying? Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says, Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Mark chapter 6, verses 46 says, And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Jesus prayed. Prayer is a wonderful blessing, my brothers and sisters. God has given to each and every one of us in order to talk to him, in order to communicate with him. We don't have to go through any high priest. We don't have to go to anyone. We can go to God ourselves on our knees, in our cars, lying in our bed, talking to him in prayer. Jesus did it. And because Jesus prayed, I know that it is my, it is my it's our only sure Hope for survival to prevent us from drifting. Jesus expressed concern to his disciples. He said, yeah, I don't want you to grow weary. I want you to pray. And so many of us are growing weary. <clears throat> when we pray less and less, we're drifting more and more. You know you're drifting when you don't have a desire to be with God's people. When you have no desire to attend the worship service, you don't want to worship, you don't want to come into God's place and worship, you, you know it's a sign that you're drifting. We've got to have David's mindset. David's mindset in Psalms 122 verse 1, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us 
go into the house of the Lord. You, you must be excited to go into God's house. The moment that excitement is leaving you, has left you, you know that you are drifting away. And if you're drifting away, you're in dangerous ground, my brothers and sisters. Have the attitude of David. But if you no longer rejoice in the worship service, you come to worship and everything is a complaint. You complain about this. You complain about that. You, 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 you drift in, my brothers and sisters. See, fellowship with God and God's people it goes beyond the service. So even, even so, we, are, we have to be concerned with our brothers and sisters and we ought to be concerned with edifying our brothers and sisters. In the book of Romans, Romans chapter 14, verse 19, the Bible said, Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify one another. That is the reason we come together and worship. That's the reason we enjoy each other's fellowship. Why? Because the, the fact that we can come together is to edify each other. Not only in the sanctuary, but also we edify each other during the week. This edification, it occurs daily, not just on Saturday. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. Listen to what the Bible says. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Daily, this exhortation is to continue. We ought to be connecting with each other. That's the reason why every night from 7 to 8, we're on the prayer line and we're edifying each other by discussion and by the word. Now we're in the book of Desire of Ages and we're praying. We, we're edifying each other. We have to find ourselves daily outside of just Sabbath where we're edifying each other. When, whenever a Christian, when you prefer more company, more companionship with your friends in the world rather than following Christ, you know that you're drifting towards the rock of spiritual destruction. Some of us find so much pleasure hanging out with our girlfriends and our boyfriends outside than in the church. So we have no pleasure in coming to church. We have no pleasure in, in worshiping. We, all our pleasure, all our focus is, is to be out there with our friends in the world. They're pulling us instead of us pulling them into the house of worship where we can magnify the Lord, where we can exalt his name, where we can edify each other, where we can encourage each other, where we can band together in strong unity with each other because we are going, we're on a journey and our journey is to heaven and we're going to get there but we've got to come together and we're going to encourage each other, we're going to pray for each other, we'll study the word together and we're going to make sure that come what may, we're praying and lifting each other up so we can make it a glory. It happens in the church. So you know, you know when you're drifting, when you no longer enjoy church, fellowship and with your brothers and sisters. You know you're drifting when you have lack of desire to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm almost done. When, when someone I've accepted this gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you know what God has done for you, when you know how he has saved you from your sins, when you know that how he's making a new creature in you, when you know that he, Christ is now living inside of you, when you know all of these good things, why wouldn't you want to tell the world about the goodness of Jesus Christ? Uh, I don't know about you, but I want to tell the world about what God has done for me, how good God has been to me, how he woke me up this morning, even though I messed up yesterday, how he forgave me for my sins and he cleansed me because of what Jesus did for me over 2,000 years ago in Calvary. I want to tell the world that they have the same opportunity to receive this good news of Jesus Christ. 
that he loves them, that he's coming again. Now, when God has done something like that for you, why won't you want to share it? See, but when a Christian, when you no longer have the desire to take the message of salvation to others, you're drifting. Because all you're focusing is on yourself. You're just focusing on your own desires and not on what Jesus said. Go into all the world and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I want you to think about this, my brothers and sisters. You're drifting when you have lost your desire to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Another sign you know that you're drifting spiritually is when you have a thrill with the world. When the things of the world are more interesting to you. 1 John chapter 2, verses 5-17, through 17, the Bible says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Whenever you have a desire for the world better than God, you are drifting. Things in the world excite you more. Oh, hey man, a new movie is coming out. And so everybody's excited. Oh, there's a party over here. Everyone is excited. The world is thrilling you more than God. You know you're drifting. No matter what you have acquired in this world, this world is going to be destroyed. Everything is going to be burnt up. The only thing that is going to save us is Jesus Christ and following him and making sure that your anchor is safely, you're secured in him, not in the world. The world has nothing for us. The pleasures of this world have nothing for us. The pride of life has nothing for us. There is nothing for you and me in the world but destruction. Our only hope, your only hope, your only future is in Jesus Christ. This world is going to pass away. The only thing that's going to live forever is he who, do the, if, he who does the will of the Father. I got a few more. You know you're drifting. When you talk against the prophet. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we do. We have a prophet that has guided the church. And so many people are talking against Oh, this about you know that you're drifting when you talk against that which is spiritual, my brothers and sisters. I don't like what they what she says. I don't like you know the reason why we don't like what's being said in her some of her writings is because it it kind of is edgy to us for our spirits. Those are the reasons. You know you're drifting. But, but there's some protections that can protect you from drifting. All you got to do is keep on rowing. <laughs> keep on moving. You've got to be diligent in your effort. You, you've got to stay busy Serving the Lord. That's a protection. Stay busy serving the Lord. That's going to keep you from drifting. 
This is not time to retire from Christian life. This is time to stay focused. This is time to stay diligent. This is time to get involved. This is time to share the gospel. This is not time for it to retire. Love of Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth to those things which are before, I press towards the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. This is time to keep moving, my brothers and sisters. No matter what has happened in the past, no matter what you've, 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 you've done in the past, it's time to stay moving. Get back in line. It's time to pick up the rower and start rowing that boat. Start rowing instead of drifting. Start rowing. Start moving, my brothers and sisters. Be diligent in your efforts. Keep rowing. You got to watch out for the undercurrents. You must be on guard for the undercurrents, uh, undercurrents of temptation that will cause you to, to move away. We've got this flesh that wars against the spirit. Just watch out. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Watch out for the nature, this fleshly nature that is a war. Expect to get, go against the grain. Even some of your friends, even some of the things that you've heard that, that some popular, you know, peer pressure, expect to go against the grains. There, there's false doctrine of all kinds coming at us. The, the devil is bringing all kinds of catastrophe at us. Expect to go against the grain. When the devil wants you to crumble, you need to let him know that you're not going to crumble. You're going to keep on rowing. You're not going to just sit down in a boat and drift. You're going to keep on rowing. Don't. You must have a strong anchor. Our minds must be stayed on Jesus Christ, who is the anchor of your soul. Our minds must be rooted in the word of God, rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. We have to be established in Jesus Christ. In order to prevent ourselves from drifting. Brothers and sisters, the devil is distracting you, it's causing things to allow you to lose your focus so that you can drift away, get caught up in the world and drift away. Stories told of a Captain pulled the boat into harbor. And he got distracted. Wasn't paying attention because something distracted him. The sailors, instead of paying attention, they got distracted because of what was going on. There was a, another ship coming in and, and the ship had all kinds of trinkets going on. It looked good. They all paying attention to the glitz and the glamour of the other ship and got distracted. Thought that they anchored the boat. And while they were all caught up looking at the other boat and the people having a good time, the boat, as the waves started to move, the boat slowly drifted from the harbor. Before they knew it, they were colliding into the boat where everybody was having a good time. And the collision brought a catastrophe and everyone 
lost their life. Just because they forgot to anchor the boat. They got distracted. So many of us are not anchored in Jesus. So many of us are caught up with the world but not caught up with Jesus. Oh, my brothers and sisters, it's time for you to get back in the word of God. It's time for you to be actively praying every day. It's time for you to study God's word every day. If this is not a daily practice, you will drift away. But I thank God for Jesus. And we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure why the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded, form, and deep in the Savior's love. You and I have an anchor that will hold us to the storms of life. When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cable strain, will your anchor hold and firm remain? Oh, you have an anchor. The anchor is Jesus. How do you anchor in Jesus? Spending time with him in his word. There's a danger in drifting, and the danger is real. We shouldn't be foolish to say, you know, I, I'm firm. I'm not going to drift away. Don't be arrogant in your spiritual life. Know that there's a possibility that all of us can drift away if we lose sight of the anchor, Jesus Christ, it can happen to you. It can happen to anyone. Signs of the drifting in life is a lack of desire to study God's word. It's a lack of desire to pray. It's a lack of desire to be with God's people. It's a lack of desire to be faithful to him. When you have lost your desire to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know you're drifting. But I'm so glad that there's an anchor. And his name is Jesus. He loves you. He's coming back for you. traps and the trappings of the enemy and cause your soul to drift away. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to the anchor of your soul. Father in heaven, we thank you for reminding us that there is danger in us drifting. We don't want to drift, but God, we ask that you will help us to hold on to you. Help us to anchor in you. Help us to daily spend time in your word. Help us to grow. Help us, oh God, to pray. Help us to get involved in your work in church. Help us to love the brethren and, edu and edify the brethren. God, help us, Jesus, to be passionate about sharing your good, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need you. We can't do it without you. Would you bless your people today? We you thank you. We thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. Lord, help that these words will stay in our minds and in our hearts. And that will draw us closer and 
closer to you, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. It's been a real great privilege sharing God's word with you. I look at the dangers of drifting. So many of us find ourselves in all kinds of situations that the devil is just throwing our way. We've got a catastrophe and turmoil just coming our way. And, you know, it's really causing us to lose sight of what's important. All of these distractions, the de it's one, there's one aim the devil has, and that aim is to cause you to drift away from Jesus Christ, cause you to lose your focus on Jesus Christ. And, and I want to encourage you today, you know, if you're looking for a church home, you're looking for a place to assemble every week, we're here. Uh, we're, we, we're, we've been closed for two weeks, but next Sabbath we'll be right back in this place. And we want to invite you to come and worship with us. We have a great time worshiping God together. And we enjoy each other's fellowship. So why wouldn't you invite somebody to come? Would you share this uh, website? Share GoshenSDA.com. Share our website. Uh, download our app. Share it with somebody. They can listen to the sermons. They, they can uh, look, do some Bible studies online. Share it with them. This is your opportunity to share the gospel. It's so easy to do it just by picking up the phone and making a phone call to one of your friends and say, listen, man, I've, we've got something good going on. Everyone, I just want to share with you. Would you spend some time this week inviting, inviting your friends to come, come worship with us next Sabbath? Be right here. We want to also encourage you, nightly, we have a prayer line every night from 7 to 9 o'clock. The information is on our website, how you can how you can get on our team's call. And we're praying with each other. And we're studying, we're in the book Desire of Ages right now. We've had a wonderful experience with the last two books and all the books that we've had so far. But now we're in the Desire of Ages. We've just finished the first chapter. Would you just, just join us? We're there every night, every night from 7 to 8. We want to invite you to come and uh, you will join us. Also, every Saturday afternoon, uh, this Sabbath afternoon at 5, we'll have a Bible study, a weekly Bible study. We're in the book of Ephesians. Come and join us. Ephesians is a sweet gospel. It's a beautiful book. And we are, we are learning so much. And so I just want to invite you to, to join us. Uh, the information is on our website. Our Bible study is there. And uh, we'll... Have a resume our food giveaway in uh, the month of June. We'll have our food giveaway again. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for uh, being uh, spending this time online. I know you could be doing many different things, but I'm so glad that you spend this time with us today. Next week, Sabbath, I'm looking forward to seeing you in this place. God bless you. And have a pleasant rest of your day and the rest of your week. I'm praying for you. Let's pray for each other. God bless you. You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So I want to encourage you today to live that. You know, when God is blessing us week by week, bi-weekly or monthly, or whenever God blesses you regularly, you should be giving your first fruits to God. Investing in his church and his business. Trust using your faith every time because the Bible is true in all that it says when you seek God and his things all of these things shall be added to you meaning your shelter your food all of these things so I want to encourage you today to do that I want to encourage you today in that way and God will do just what he said he would do let us pray. Oh,
Heavenly Father, thank you. You've already done it. You've already blessed us, Lord God. You've already done it. And we are grateful, Lord God, because we got the week, month after month, you continue to bless us. So I pray, Lord, that you give each of us the measure of faith we need to do your will, to do just what you'd have us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that we have feasted in the presence of our God and received overflowing blessings from worshiping together, let us take the message to everyone we meet that Jesus knows, Jesus cares, Jesus is returning for us again. In this uncertain world, we can rest peaceably because we know of the blessed assurance that God is in control and we are his beloved children. In this coming week, seek to share the joy, hope, and peace of Jesus with each soul that you meet. Spread the good news in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Now may